American Indian Higher Education Consortium Conference is held annually. This is the 30th annual conference, and it's rotated amongst the 36 tribal colleges in the United States. And it just so happens that most of the tribal colleges are in the upper Midwest. And so it usually goes to Montana, North, South Dakota, North Dakota, and then away college, like usually the Woodlands or down south or in the western coast. So the, the conference is usually rotated amongst the tribal colleges. Um, we started actually planning the conference in October. Um, we were asked if we could host it this year as we were supposed to be hosting it in 2014, but we've been asked to host it early. So we started planning in October, and what we have done is we've taken the North Dakota Tribal Colleges and we have set up planning committees, and we set up competition committees, and we have been meeting as tribal colleges two or three times and doing a lot of work through emails to get the competition running as smoothly and the conference running as smoothly as it has. We have actually 32 of the 36 co um, tribal colleges represented at the conference. Do they know where they're going to hold it next year? Be yes, I believe it's in um, Rapid City and the South Dakota schools will be hosting. The activities are limited to tribal college students, but we do have things that are open to the public. For this conference, we had the powwow that was open to the public. We had the Val Kilmer presentation. Um, anybody can come and register for the conference and attend the workshops and general assemblies. It's just that the actual competitions are for tribal college students. Everything this year is the students have shown great leadership and responsibility and good sportsmanship. My name is Valerie Fair, and I'm from Lummi Nation in Bellingham, Washington. How? Hello. My name is David Runhorn. I am a student at United Tribes Technical College, and I am this year's Mr. Ahek, and I am a member of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. This past year, my reign as Miss Ahek, I've been able to contact my local high school and elementary schools and influence the children there to continue to study for their education. I've also been able to attend a first year conference for students who want to create a council within their high school for tribal tribal schools. This year is my name is Mr. A. Heck. I have done many projects out to United Tribes Technical College such as helping with the powwow. I've attended numerous gatherings all around Oklahoma, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Nebraska, and Nevada. Um, I helped out with a project in Nevada for their first annual powwow called the Sacred Visions Powwow held in Wadsworth. Nevada and it was a pretty good experience for me because we got to build the power grounds and the hand game grounds as well. This is my second AHIC. Um, I just heard about it last year down when we went down to Chandler, Arizona and it was a really good experience for me and I decided to run for Mr. AHIC and I got picked so it made it even more funner for me because it, we had a whole year to get ready for this this day, Heck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the beauty of that is being able now to know and have experience about what this AHEC conference is about. And the great thing about being here is you're here with other tribal students and you're seeing them blossom in their own ways with the competitions that they're participating in. And I think this is an empowering tool for all tribal students and I hope that each year different students are able to come and attend this conference to give them that confidence they need to continue on in their life. Is this your first time at AHEC? I was at AHEC in Phoenix, but I spoke only in a small little workshop, so this is my first time talking to the big group. Were you expecting to be honored? No, I was completely surprised. I also didn't know that I would be so emotional in sharing some of my, you know, hard scrabble childhood stories, but it's good, and I think that a lot of people, you know, realize that they have whatever challenges they're going through. If they realize that person on television has gone through it too, you know, it makes it a little easier. I couldn't believe how many people wanted to come up and hug me and say thank you. I, I'm just very emotional for me. You know, as I said, I'm sort of in the twilight of the television career, and it just kind of felt like a nice acknowledgement, I guess, even though it kind of felt more than just a speech. It was uh, some love came at me from the community. 
Uh, what kind of words of encouragement do you have to give to any other people that are interested in going into the media field? Um, don't be scared. A lot of times people think it's so scary, but really it's not. You're doing it right now. You came to the event, you watch it, you tell people what happened. And uh, the first time I did a live shot, you know, everybody at the time was really scared. They thought some reporters can do tape because they can just memorize what they're going to say and talk to the camera, but you have to have really nerves of steel to be live. But really, it's not. You just look at the camera as if it's a telephone, and you're just telling people what happened. And if you keep it that simple, then anybody could be a news reporter. I think it's actually easier today than it was when I started because now you have little tiny cameras, everybody can do YouTube, you can go right on the internet, you can edit. Um, I think that everybody really can be a reporter now. How long have you been in the business altogether? Oh, altogether. Um, I was at local tele television in Seattle for six years and then I went to ABC for three years and then CBS for just shy of 21. So it's been a quarter century, more than a quarter century, and I'm um, nearing the retirement days, but I want to use some of my energy and focus to actually give some time and attention to Indian education. What kind of things do you have in mind? Um, raising money perhaps for the American Indian College Fund. Also, I think that I just want to support the tribal colleges. I visited a couple of them. I visited Sitting Bull. They've got a beautiful campus, but I don't know if every Tribal College has a similar campus, or some more wealthy than others because they are getting donations from casino tribes. I, mean, I don't really know, but I would like to somehow be involved and support kids going to school. So right now, are you just on the road and going and talking to different schools and what? Yeah, I'm doing more of that than I am reporting right now. Um, however, I don't think my reporting days are totally done. We'll just see what happens. Your address to the students today, you said you, you made some very positive remarks. What do you think the students walk away with? Well, I hope they get some sense of uh, inspiration uh, and uh, trust that their own individualism, no matter what anybody says, is really what counts. You know, great strength of, that I've noticed from all Aboriginal peoples around the world and particularly those that um, here where I worked in South Dakota and uh, living out of Wangli while I worked in the Badlands area and the uh, people where I live as well in New Mexico that share a, a, a sense of humor because it comes from uh, what humor does. It's like a spark uh, that reminds us that life is a positive thing, it's a positive spark, even when terrible things happen. Particularly about the arts that um, is so uh, shocking when uh, budgets come up. Uh, same thing with sports, but particularly with the arts, when tragedy strikes, what's the first thing we do? We gather together, someone tells a story, someone makes you laugh, someone sings a song, to remind us that we're all together and everything's going to be all right. It doesn't matter where you are, what the tragedy is, that's what happens. First thing, we, we tell a story, we make sure everybody's okay, and do what we can to help. And then it gets talked about as if it's not the first thing that we do. Even our language, you know, it's so crucial in the Native American cultures, but all Aboriginal peoples around the world, to honor and respect how we communicate. The, the fact that it's not being respected, is, it's, a, it's a shocking, but it shouldn't be too surprising. Just like uh, the, the animals that I care a lot about. The wildlife is just a reflection of love. It's just another uh, way of seeing respect or lack of respect. And when the animals are dying, it's from neglect and, uh, and uh, the idea that humans think they're more important. So everything that starts out of education, of a kind of sense of awakening spirit, uh, is what I care most about now.